And not next Monday. Well, no, two Mondays from now. Are we ready, Mrs. Warhol? We're ready. Kenmore City Council is now in session. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Kugler? Present. Council Member Marshall? Present. Deputy Mayor Herbig? Here. Council Member File? Here. Council Member O'Kane? Here. Council Member Shrubnik? Here. Mayor Baker? Here. Will you All please uh, rise and uh, join me for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to, and the, to Republic, the Republic, which, is which it stands, one nation, one nation God, under God, God indivisible, liberty. With liberty and justice for all. Oh, thank you. I would like to acknowledge that we are on traditional land of the first people of Kenmore and honor with gratitude the land itself and the Coast Salish peoples who thrive in this place, alive and strong. Um, next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. If there are no objections, the agenda will stand approved as written. Next item on the agenda are some proclamations. Who is ever Mike Live? Could we please Mr. mute? Price. Took a while, a couple weeks, a couple weeks away. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor Baker. Yeah. I think you're on it with a separate device and it was picking up sound. No, I have no devices here except for this computer. Okay, you're on with two devices, Mr. I Payne. don't have two. To okay, whatever. <laughs> um, it does, Mr. Mayor, it does show like I see an image of your still picture and then your your uh, speaking picture as well. But I don't know if that has anything to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where that's coming from. Mayor, is it possible that you might be signed in through your cell phone as well? No, uh uh. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure where that oh, is. We, we need to take care of this because if it's not the mayor, then it's somebody else. Oh, there it goes. It's gone. I don't know why it came up. So, because nothing's on. Um, all right. First proclamation is a Pedestrian and Bike Month. Whereas the Target Zero Initiative was adopted by the city of Kenmore in April of 2014 with the goal of achieving zero pedestrian and bicyclist fatalities and serious injuries in Kenmore by 2025 by increasing awareness of pedestrian, bicyclist and driver safety issues. And whereas multimodal transportation safety in Kenmore with a specific focus on pedestrian, bicycle, and other means of travel continues to be one of Kenmore City Council's top priorities. And whereas bicycling and walking improve people's health, save money in the household, budgets and improve uh, people's general well being and expressed happiness. And whereas Kenmore's road and trail system attracts pedestrian and bicyclists each year, providing economic health, transportation, tourism, and scenic benefits. And whereas creating a pedestrian and bicycle friendly community has been shown to improve citizens' health, well being, and quality of life growing the economy of Kenmore, attracting tourism, improving traffic safety, supporting student learning outcomes, reducing pollution, congestion, and wear and tear on our streets and roads. And whereas in 2020, the city embarked on a milestone project, the Sammamish River Bridge Replacement Project, 
which enhances bicycle and pedestrian options. And whereas earlier this year, the city embarked on two additional projects, the 68th Avenue Northeast and Juanita Drive pedestrian and bike improvements, which include components such as buffered bicycle lanes, new sidewalks, enhanced lighting, additional signage, all contributing to more options for pedestrians and bicyclists and a more enjoyable way to experience Kenmore. And whereas all people deserve to be able to get to where they're going safely, whether by driving, riding transit, walking or bicycling. And now therefore I, David Baker, Mayor, City of Kenmore, on behalf of the City Council to hereby proclaim the month of May 2018 to be Bike in Pedestrian Safety Month throughout the city of Kenmore and urge all residents to join with the city council in a, this observance. And we have another one. This proclamation is boating, uh, Safe Boating and Paddling Week. May 22nd through 28th of 2021. Whereas on the average of 600 people die each year in boating related accidents in the US with the vast majority of those accidents caused by human error and poor judgment and not by the boat, equipment or environmental factors. Whereas a significant number of boaters who lose their lives by drowning each year would be alive today had they worn their life jackets. And whereas the city of Kenmore is bounded by 7.8 miles of shoreline along Lake Washington, the Sammamish River and Swamp Creek. And whereas a large number of Kenmore's residents of all ages engage in recreational boating and whereas the mission of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary Division II overseeing the North Shore area is to promote and improve recreational boating safety by teaching boating safety courses and conducting vessel safety checks. Now I therefore, David Baker, Mayor City of Kenmore on behalf of the City Council, to hereby proclaim May 22nd through 28th to be safe boating and paddling week throughout the city of Kenmore. We encourage all Kenmore residents to dedicate themselves to learning about and practicing safe boating and water play, including the wearing of life jackets. And we are very fortunate tonight to have uh, with us from Division Two of the Coast Guard uh, Auxiliary, um, let's see now, I had it just here, and if you bear with me a second. Anastasia, uh, it looks like Larry of Blackstock and Dale Bodica will be here for the proclamation. If you two gentlemen would like to say something, please. So, so Mayor, thank you. As a resident of the city of Kenmore, I'm, uh, I'd like to thank the city council for the proclamation. Uh, we do this every year uh, because this technically is the most dangerous time of the year. Uh, people are, are, are getting back out on the water and the ambient temperature over the weekend was very nice. Now, to, to, not, to, not so much today, but that water that they're boating in was ice, or was, uh, it was snow just a couple of weeks ago. So it's really cold. Unfortunately, we've already had a couple of deaths in the state of Washington this year. So uh, we would appreciate and, and uh, just let you, the council know that uh, this is a very, a very important thing because the state of Washington in 2019 was fifth in the nation in deaths and sixth in the nation in property damage from accidents. So anything we can do to bring those numbers down, we'd, we really appreciate with the Paddlecraft uh, in the city of Kenmore, uh, the new uh, shell, uh, the new uh, facility you're putting together at what's now the um, the square. And I understand there's a new facility at uh, uh, Rhododendron Park. 
anything we can do to uh, partner with the city, we would uh, appreciate you getting a hold of us and seeing what we can do to uh, improve safety on the water in the city of Kenmore. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next proclamation is Kids to Parks Day. Uh, whereas Kids to Parks Day empowers kids and encourages families to get outdoor and visit America's parks. And whereas it is important to introduce a new generation to our nation's parks because of the decline in park attendance over the last decades. And whereas we should encourage children to lead more active lifestyles to combat issues of childhood obesity, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, and hypercholesteremia. And whereas Kids to Parks Day is open to all children and adults across the country to encourage a large and diverse group of participants. And whereas Kids to Parks Day will broaden children's appreciation of nature and the outdoors. And whereas the city of Kenmore features spectacular local and state parks and the Burke Gilman Trail, including waterfront activities at the Place Where Things Blooms Park. And whereas the pandemic has contributed to recent rise in depression amongst children and outdoor play therapy can be an enjoyable and cost-effective remedy. And whereas Kids to Parks Day will recognize the importance of uh, recreating responsibility responsibly while enjoying the benefits of the outdoors. Now, therefore, I, David Baker, Mayor of the City of Kenmore, on behalf of the City Council, to hereby proclaim May 22nd as Kids to Parks Day throughout the City of Kenmore. And we, incur, we, urge, we urge residents of Kenmore to make time on May 22nd to take the children in their lives to a neighborhood, state, or national park for safe enjoyment of our beautiful surroundings. Thank you all. Um, next item on the agenda is public comments. We wanna welcome our community members to the council's meeting. In this forum, the council cannot engage or dialogue with the public. The primary role of the council is to listen. All comments must be addressed to the mayor and city council. Please use the raise hand feature if you wish to speak. The clerk will acknowledge your request and call your name when it's your turn. Your time will start when we confirm that we can hear you. Please state your name and city of residence for the record and keep your comments to the allotted time. There will be a timer on the screen for you to see. Your time cannot be granted to another and your clock time will not be reset unless there are extenuating circumstances and the presiding officer has expressly allowed it. Screen sharing is not allowed and you can submit materials to the council or clerk in advance. This meeting is being recorded and thank you for taking the time to express your comments. Mrs. Warhol, will you please call the first person? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Right now, I see four hands raised. I'd like to call them in this order. Nope, more, ra more hands raised. Tracy Benazinski, Vicki Grayland, Stacy Valenzuela, David Morton, followed by David, Dave and Christiana Matthews. Tracy Benazinski. Tracy, can you hear us? Uh, Tracy Bonashinsky, Kenmore. Uh, this past week, I attended an orientation for the North Shore Community Wildlife Science Network, a joint project of UW Bothell, the Environmental Education and Research Center at St. Edward State Park, and the North Shore community. Researchers hope to have cameras placed in concentric arcs of varying distances from St. Edward State Park to understand how animals using one of the most intact native forest habitats in the greater Seattle area might also be using the land surrounding the park. In particular, researchers are interested in how animals travel in and out of the park how they use the residential and natural areas around the park and what kinds of areas outside the park provide the best habitat for them. 
Community participants will host a motion triggered wildlife camera in their yard or in a green space near their home, review their photo data, the photo data their camera collects and submit that data to lead researchers at UW Bothell for analysis and interpretation. The researchers hope that through establishing a network of community scientists in the North Shore area, they will discover connections between land use and animal activity, allowing them to identify the kinds of habitats and practices that favor wildlife. Given the high level of wildlife diversity in St. Edward State Park, they may also be able to define an achievable standard for wildlife favorable habitat protection and conservation that can be applied in other urban areas in the Pacific Northwest. More generally, they hope that this project can help educate the community about the diversity of wildlife that lives among us and how we can better share our habitat with our non-human neighbors. I live north of 522, a major barrier to habitat connectivity for most non-human animals, so I will not likely be able to participate in this study. I am, however, excited to follow its progress and eagerly await the study's findings and recommendations. One thing we don't need to wait to know is that trees, tree canopy, and connecting existing natural open spaces with new green corridors, which could happen, for example, through planting more trees in public spaces and inviting private property owners to conserve existing trees and plant more wherever possible, are all critical in supporting wildlife biodiversity in urban and suburban areas. Our historic and present day land use decisions, the things we allow on both public and private property have come with considerable environmental and climate costs. When we lose a tree, we lose more than just that one tree. We are at risk of losing the animals that call it home, the stabilizing effect that tree roots have on a hillside or sloped land, the rainfall trapping and subsequent flooding mitigation trees provide, the cooperative relationships among trees carrying out, carried out through their roots and mycelium underground and so much more. When an old tree is cut down, the loss is even more acute. Replacing the environmental and climate functions of those kinds of trees takes decades, decades we don't have in our effort to mitigate the worst effects of an already changing climate. I come before you tonight to thank you for your care for the trees in our community and to support you in moving forward with more protections for our trees and tree canopy before it's too late. I appreciate the recent recommendations that staff brought forward for changes this year and support taking action there. I also support additional action around tree protections and tree canopy this year. I realize that might be, mean an additional expenditure, but I think we need to strongly consider that the benefits of acting sooner might outweigh the costs of not acting soon enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vicki Grayland. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you, I'm Vicki Grayland and I live in Kenmore. I wanna support what Tracy just said. I'm particularly talking about the trees at uh, our new park, newly named park. And uh, I apologize, I'm not yet uh, familiar with the correct pronunciation, but the place where things grow. Um, there are mature trees there that deserve to be saved uh, for climate mitigation and for all the reasons that Tracy just stated. And I think before we finalize the agreements for creating this as a beautiful space for everyone, we need to have an honest assessment of the most environmentally friendly and positive methods to create the space. We have to make sure that the parking lot is gravel that's what the, the city's website currently says. Um, and we have to have an honest assessment and research into the possible historical importance of the trees. They might have been planted by native people for some historical reason. I don't think that's clear right now, but um, maybe the historical society can help with that. And um, we need to, always consider what we're doing for the best interests of the people, and that means the environment, and for the best inter interests of the non-human animals that Tracy mentioned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stacy Valenzuela. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. I agree with Tracy and Vicki. First, I want to stress the call for climate action is now. We need your actions to support climate change. You have a huge chance to do the right thing. Put these words into action. Make the great step forward and preserve Ta Ach Adis, formerly Squires Landing Park. To remove the invasive plants, preserve the natural habitat the city's tree canopy. This was all number one for the residents' request on three 2019 surveys. 
preserve natural habitat and trails. They did not want cement. They did not want asphalt. The park should be for leisure use for all residents, all visitors, as well as environmental educational programs. Show environmental stewardess by use only perious materials, planks or gravel. Preserve the whole area for our people, wildlife, birds and fish habitats. This action would show Kenmore is taking climate action seriously, going to a whole new level that other cities should emulate. This kind of action is what deserves awards and recognition. And in fact, Kirkland just received one for what they did at their park. Also, I'm confused and need clarification. I have read the first Kenmore Climate Action Plan and the credits. I see Rob Carlinsky, Richard Scheuer, Sawyer, and intern Nick listed with credit. I also see list Cascadia Consulting with a cost of 118 K plus an additional 86 K for staff support. City staff are preparing this cap K4C, the public and business input. And I'm understanding that this won't be finished until July of 2021. I also wanna talk about the eminent domain. I feel it should only be used in an emergency and if no alternative to doing a project. I also think the owner of the land should be offered compensation for loss, as well as for any inconvenience during construction. I agree and support and appreciate David Morton sharing his deep knowledge of the asphalt emissions. There is a continued concern of what is in our air. I hope the city will use some of the funding to assist with testing of the emissions to prove if it is the emissions or something else that is negatively affecting our residents. In Coffee with Council, there was a few neighbors that came forward with some issues that are really uh, uh, being stressed on our neighbors. The Cedar Park North Shore Church chopping down trees, clear cutting and causing dust. Also a couple other people are having trouble with coming to Kenmore and not getting the ordinance or uh, getting help from the permitting process. I hope that you can uh, help with the harassing that's going on and with further assistance to some of Thank our neighbors. You, Thank you. Thank you. Um, David Morton. Hi, uh, good evening, council members. I'm David Morton. I live near Redmond. The Cadman Asphalt Plant in Kenmore uses asphalt cement as a binder in their process. I suspect that the facility has also been using cutback asphalt for several decades. The VOC emissions from a hot mix asphalt facility using performance graded asphalt cement might be tolerable, but by using medium cure cutback asphalt, thousands of tons of toxic vapors are evaporated into the air, producing massive air pollution. The asphalt plant is located on a parcel zoned for heavy industrial use. Most cities in the U.S. don't permit heavy industry to be located in close proximity to residential areas. Many health conscious cities ban manufacturing operations that are more apt to be disruptive to residents. Many people are concerned about the pollution that comes with heavy industry. Light industrial facilities typically have less environmental impacts than those associated with heavy industry and zoning laws are more likely to permit light industry near residential areas. Light industry is the production of small consumer goods using moderate amounts of partially processed materials. Examples of light industries include the manufacturing of clothes, shoes, furniture, consumer electronics, and home appliances. Light industries require only a small amount of raw materials and fuel. Light industry typically causes little to no air pollution. The term heavy industry refers to industries that cause disruption to the environment in the form of pollution. Cadman's asphalt plant in Kenmore is a facility which is, has produced lots of air pollution, uses mountains of raw materials, burns lots of natural gas, belches tons of CO2, and disrupts residents and the environment. Cadman's asphalt plant looks, smells, and acts like a heavy industry. People are concerned about the noise and pollution created by the Cadman asphalt plant. Some are advocating for a zoning change there from heavy industry to light industry. 
which would ban manufacturing operations that are disruptive to residents and would favor quieter, cleaner ones. It's known that the plant emits tons of toxic and carcinogenic chemicals. People have concerns about the elevated risk of cancer in the areas downwind of Cadman. Cadman should want to be a good, clean, non-toxic, and compatible neighbor and not act in a way that shows a disregard for the foreseeable harm and risk of harm caused by their actions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morton. Dave and Christiana Matthews. Dave and Christiana Matthews. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi. Um, hi. Okay, so I'll try to go this fast as I can. Um, we are sitting, um, our concerns are regarding the new Balburnie townhome development. We have in, engaged the city planners and the city itself um, over the last two years with concerns, but it, honestly, it just seems like no one in city planning wants to take any action or do any further risk assessment. Um, the city of Kenmore went against its own in, intersection safety regulations by issuing a variance of the entrance to the Balburnie project. The safety regulations state that it requires a minimum of a hundred foot distance between entrance and street at an intersection. They approved and issued a 20 foot decrease of that safety distance where there will now be a quick sharp left turn, which I have video of this happening um, of the turn and how the cars will go into the development and that it is an actual safety issue because it's a sharp left turn with no traffic lights. There will be no traffic light moderating the flow of this busy intersection and there are 83 new townhomes going in and only one two way road in and out of the entire huge development with no visible turnarounds on the current development plan. If safety for pedestrian and bicycle um, riders is such a top priority for the city of Kenmore. I am very confused as to why the city would go against its own regulations in granting a variance to decrease the 100 foot distance from intersection to intersection in an already busy intersection with no traffic lights. And so we are suggesting that the reroute the entrance be in to be in compliance with the city's own distance regulations. Um, we're also concerned about the clear cutting of hundreds, hundreds of trees that protected our Douglas firs from windstorms for a century or more. These trees have been protected from the winds coming from the Southwest. We've already had trees drop huge branches that have destroyed our pergola, parts of our fence. And we are now completely terrified of what's gonna happen in the next big windstorm um, because all those trees that were protecting our trees are gone. And the arborist who did the assessment for the development was unable to provide any data on how the trees on the adjacent properties were assessed um, for the report. And it's unclear um, if the adjacent trees are not a threat of Winthrow. And that's about all I'm gonna have time for. I the solution for this one would be um, all the trees on the adjacent properties be evaluated by a neutral party if there are threats discovered, hold Westcott responsible for remedying the threats to the property owner's satisfaction. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mayor, I still see quite a few hands raised. I'd like to take them in this order. Melanie Davies, Julian Lowe of Puget Sound Energy, Elizabeth, John Hendrickson, and John Peoples. Melanie Davies. Melanie Davies. Hi, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Good evening, uh, Council and Mayor. Um, I am Melanie Davies from Snohomish, Washington. I work for Westcott Homes. I'm the representative for the Balburnie Park Project. And I submitted a letter earlier today uh, for public comment in regard to the um, start of construction on the project and our intention to uh, work with neighbors and um, 
the fact that we actually are working with neighbors, including Dave and Christiana Matthews, actively to address any concerns that they have. I would also like to point out that our project is approved, approved for construction. We meet city code. Um, we've just started declaring on the property and just, just um, late last week. And I just wanted to make myself available to any questions and introduce myself. So thank you very much. Thank you. Puget Sound Energy, Julian Lowe. Hi, good evening. Julian Lowe, Local Government Affairs Manager with Puget Sound Energy. And I uh, came to speak at public comment a little while back. Uh, about what we've been doing on climate and our Beyond Net Zero pledge. And I'm back here tonight to share some information about what we're doing uh, to help uh, Kenmore customers. And so uh, Puget Sound Energy is helping qualified customers pay their electric and natural gas bills. And we've created the COVID Bill Assistance Program to help customers facing financial struggle. The COVID Bill Assistance Program offers up to $2,500 in additional utility bill payment assistance up to $2,500 to forgive past balances for customers who received energy assistance in the past, extended payment plans up to 18 months, the option to change your energy bills due date in order to help with monthly budgeting. PSE is committed to being a trusted community partner and doing whatever it takes to get our Puget Sound families through this challenging time. In 2020, we made over $9 million in bill payment assistance available to over 15,000 customers, and now we're ready to do even more. If you're a PSC customer, learn if you qualify by visiting www.pse.com slash assistance. I'm really hoping that the city will be able to share this information about the program on its newsletters and its social media channels. I'll be following up with uh, additional information um, on a one pager that I'll email out please feel free to contact me if you have any additional questions. Thank you to the Kenmore City Council and staff for all that it's been doing to assist uh, customers through this pandemic. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Elizabeth? Hi, can you hear me or see me? <laughs> Both, we can hear and see you. Oh, great. I only see you, Anastasia, but thank you. Um, Elizabeth Mooney, I am a proud resident of Kenmore. I um, have grandchildren and I just was taking care of them and I want to bring them to my healthy Kenmore. So I know that um, I really appreciate the proclamation tonight about bikers being important to Kenmore, top priority for sure. Um, I went to the stoop opening. I really think it was amazing and positive. And I want to say that I support everything that Tracy Bonazinski, Vicki Grayland, Stacy Valenzuela, and David Morton said tonight. I think there are a lot of people in our community that are not aware that the Cadman Asphalt Facility is not monitored according to modern health standards. And I think that is something that is going to cause people concern as it should. Um, we are one Puget Sound ecosystem. And I know that some of those emissions could cause harm. I know that I do not like to breathe them when I'm on the Burke Gilman Trail. I know that there are good people who work there but um, enough is enough. We do not want to be a city known for you know, the heavy industry. Um, I really believe that we need to do something after all this time with Cascadia Law and the environmental folks that we're spending $100,000 on tonight. And I was wondering after Puget Sound Clean Air Agency came to speak to us, might it be wise for Kenmore to put some of that money into its own uh, comprehensive data collection at the Burke Gilman Trail so that we can ensure ourselves without worrying about waiting for Puget Sound Clean Air Agency or any other agency to protect us, 
we take control of our own shoreline that we are the stewards of. We need to protect our citizens. And I'm just wondering, could we consider um, equipment that would do a comprehensive data collection of the emissions coming from that area, the heavy industry? Um, Cadman needs an incentive to be a good neighbor. And if our city just had its own monitors and let everybody know what the data is, then I think that would go a long way for us taking care of our shoreline. None of us are safe until all of us are safe from environmental degradation. And let's work together with all of these um, communities. Thank you. Thank you. John Hendrickson. John Hendrickson. Okay, I'm here. You hear me? I hear you. Okay, thanks everybody. John Hendrickson, Kenmore, Washington. Um, first, I'd like to address two issues. The first one, I'd like to uh, follow up on Carl Michaelman's comments last week about uh, Joe Marshall and how originally when he was running for council, he was against the hotel. Was, and my recollection, he was clearly against the hotel. And uh, now when it was opened up, he's up there supporting it, maybe pandering for votes. And the issue there is one of in integrity and it affects the whole council. And so um, back in June of 1990, Nelson Mandela came to City College in New York and he made this comment. He said, for anybody who changes his principles, depending on whom he is dealing, this is not a man who can lead a nation or be a good leader for the city of Kenmore. So it's a bad habit to get into, I think. And it's, you know, I was on the council for eight years. And, I, and to me, when I see something like that, that's so blatant, I, th I feel it just kind of makes Joe as one of the family with this Kenmore city council. Example tonight, you have a month for pedestrian safety and when this city started in our feasibility study, we were collecting a road tax and it was made up of a combination of our property tax, plus we had to add a utility tax. We would have paid in road taxes over a hundred million dollars in the first 20 years to King County. We've paid that to Kenmore and then some and the city refuses to acknowledge that we pay this road tax. So Dave Baker is one of the principal people who's been pushing this deception. Deborah Shrevnik was part of the original people who incorporated the city. And she's also promoted this deception. Nigel Herbig also came on and was steadfastly supporting this deception. And so my point is for people like Joe and the rest of the council, you know, these people put out false information or lies to, and, you know, they so much they start to believe their own lies. And when the whole council gets to that position, things really get bad. We had three people die in a four month period. Before that, we could never get the city to admit responsibility for road safety. And we only had three areas of responsibility, public safety and land use, public safety with police, public safety with roads. And the city deceives the public about this $100 million lie. Please stop it. Thank you. Thank you. John Peoples. Yes, John Peoples, Ken Moore. Uh, good evening, Ken Moore City Council. Uh, my remarks tonight are related to eminent domain. I share uh, many concerns with those who are concerned about the use of eminent domain. I'd like to ask the city council to, uh, or remind them that eminent domain should be the absolutely last resort uh, solution uh, for a public benefit only. Eminent domain should never, ever, ever be used to benefit a private entity or private individual. I propose that uh, in addition to landowners should be uh, being fairly compensated for their um, uh, lost property, I would 
proposed that landowners and others displaced should be offered the right of first refusal for municipal employment with the city of Kenmore on the completed public project, perhaps eliminate diversity, equity, and inclusion positions to make way in the budget for employment by these eminent domain refugees. And um, uh, looking forward to the 4th of July holiday coming up where we can all celebrate being Americans. And I also uh, wanna put a, a pitch in there for whatever Memorial Day ceremonies there are in the area. Um, I hope the uh, city council members take the opportunity to avail themselves of um, that, uh, re those remembrances. Uh, people who died so that all of us can enjoy the fruits of being Americans. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Mayor Baker, I see no further hands raised. Mayor, you may be muted. Is there anybody else wishing to be heard? Um, I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Um, I'll declare the public comments uh, closed. Thank you all very much uh, for your comments. Uh, we do appreciate hearing from you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent agenda stands approved unanimously. Next item on the agenda, ordinance number 21. 0522 authorizing the acquisition uh, by negotiation or condemnation of certain real property interests needed for the 190th Street culvert replacement project, providing for construction of a new culvert and adjacent stream restoration. Mr. S City Engineer, Mr. Vincente. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, as we mentioned, we're going to be talking about the 190th Street Culvert Project. Uh, before we get started, though, I do want to provide some clarification and correction regarding the information that was presented or provided to you for this project. Uh, within the agenda, we note the Agenda Bill 190th Culvert Project. The ordinance listed in there is not the correct ordinance. The correct ordinance is the separate file attached to the agenda, Ordinance Number 210522. Northeast 190th Culvert Project. And then within that ordinance, we uh, neglected to include a couple of, uh, to identify a couple of attachments. And so on page one, the third, whereas needs to be revised to read, in order to construct the culvert project and provide maintenance of the culvert and adjacent stream, it is necessary to acquire, condemn, appropriate, take, and damage portions of and interest in real property, comma, in the form of fee, simple rights of way, and temporary construction easements, comma, as legally described and depicted on attachment A, comma, exhibits B and exhibit C, comma, and uh, attached here to and incorporated by this reference and said real property is further identified by King County tax parcel numbers and site address as follows. The additional correction is within section two on page two. First sentence should read, the city council finds and determines that acquisition of the rights and interests in the real property described and depicted on attachment A, comma, exhibits B, comma, and exhibits C, parent, quote, property, unquote, parent is necessary, are necessary for the construction of the culvert project, which project is for a public use. So we'll be making, if approved, we'll be making those corrections to the ordinance for signature. With that, I will pass to Terry, the project manager for this project. Terry. Thank you. I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, can you guys see that?
Yes, we can. Okay, we can see it. Okay. Thank you and good evening to mayor and city council members. Um, this is the vicinity map of the Northeast 190th culvert replacement project. Um, the up at the north is at the top of the page and that's 61st Avenue nor, uh, Northeast and the cross street is Northeast 190th street. <clears throat> the, the general project area is in this box and it includes portions of the tributary stream 0056, also known as Cat's Whiskers Stream. The tributary um, stream 0056 is uh, a fish bearing stream and it is the east of 61st Avenue, Northeast. Flows have been established behind the head walls and the rockeries. This has undermined the pavement and multiple repairs have been made to this pavement. Uh, there was a low interest application um, for a loan and that was approved and in use currently. Uh, the design uh, is to make a fish passable culvert and permits are in process. We've completed 30 and 60 percent design. 90% design is in process right now. And when we build, if we build this and it gets approved, um, it will have to be in a fish window, which is generally between July and August. And the permitting agency will determine the dates on that. We are currently in a utility coordination with PSE, which is, includes gas and electrical, North Shore U Utility District, Zipley and Comcast. This is the portion where we're working on land acquisition and the land acquisition will require us to get both permanent and um, temporary construction easements. Uh, the permanent properties impacted, there's three properties or parcels that are affected by both the temporary construction easement and the the um, permanent uh, properties that we would be acquiring. And the permanent acquisitions we would need for the culvert, the future culvert maintenance and the stream and road maintenance. The three temporary construction easements are um, constructing the culvert in this, um, for constructing the, the stream, excuse me, for constructing the culvert and for the stream corridor mitigation. Part of the project will have a stream and habitat uh, restoration. So as discussed before the permanent acquisitions, um, first of all, I wanna explain that uh, North is to the left now on 61st Avenue. I've flipped you around a little bit. And this is the area of where we would be replacing the culvert in this blacked out box here. So the permanent acquisitions would be the green shaded areas here on both sides of 190th. And there is three properties here. There's a slight line right here dividing this property from the, the east side to the west side. And then for the temporary construction easements, that would be this purple shaded hatched area on both sides. This right side is one property and the left side has two properties that we would need for the construction of the project. The condemnation ordinance authorizes staff to utilize eminent domain and we haven't started any of this process on any of the parcels yet. We just would like to get this authorized for time saving uh, reasons. Um, and most of that is because of the construction in the fish window, which was between the July and August. That's the only time that the work in the water can be done. And if it's not approved, it could delay our project a year. So we, during the condemnation ordinance, we also list all properties to avoid singling out any individual property owners. Um, the steps before condemnation is we present the offer to the owners in a good faith negotiation. And if we give each 
owner of the properties a 30 day to review all of the uh, offer, the, their individual offers. And if needed, we can do a settlement negotiation. Um, and if things aren't working for that, um, we can use the option of possession and use while we continue negotiations so that we can continue on with the project. And as the last step, then um, if we can't come to an agreement for the negotiation, negotiations or they will, um, that's when we use the possession and use. And if they will not let us onto the property for the, um, the granted for the uh, project, then we would um, use the condemnation process. And I wanted to let, make sure that I let you guys all know that all three property owners have been contacted before the letters were, had gone out and certified. And I personally met with two of the property owners um, and are, we're using a real estate services uh, to talk to all of these properties. We, we also talked to them before the letters and explained to them the process of condemnation so that it wasn't an alarming process for them. So um, my recommendation is to adopt an ordinance 210522 authorizing the acquisition by condemnation of the property interest as needed for the project Northeast 190th Street Culvert Replacement Project. Is there any questions? Councilmember Marshall. Thank you. So could you outline for the public the effect if we didn't do this, if we didn't have any improvement, uh, the effect on the road? Well, we would have to continually repair the the um, undermining, and we don't know how deep the undermining is going because you just go in there and repair it when you can. Part of the project, we would have to reroute the stream during this portion. So it would just be continual repairs of the project. And if a large storm came through, we don't know how that would affect it. It could wash it out. Council Member Shrebnik. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. And I really appreciate how, you know, thoughtful around the use of this tool and, you know, that we're also trying to, you know, protect the fish passable uh, 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 lo location. Uh, I remember years ago when, when PERC, long before I was on the council four years ago, talking about 0056 being fish bearing. So I really appreciate all the work that's being done on that. Um, so clarifying just two things, it sounds like you're saying that condemnation is the last resort. So clarification on that. And then the other piece is since you have met with the two, two of the three property owners already, I'm curious what their response has been. So I have talked with the real estate services person and they had approached them before and then we had a meeting on site and it, it um, from her profession of doing many of these, she did not think that we were going to need to go into the condemnation process. I merely uh, were, was doing this in the interest of saving time and keeping the project on schedule for um, the, the construction window. Oh, and I'm sorry, I didn't address both of you as council members, but thank you for your questions. Uh, council member file. Thank you, Mayor Baker. You know, I have- a, There was a second question. I don't know whether Terry has a chance to address that. Oh, I'm sorry, um, what was the second question? Yeah, council member out of order. Council member file, could you just one second? The I had I had two questions that I had asked. One was the condemnation, and the other was the response from the property owners. Okay, so yeah, uh, thank you, Council Member Shrebnik. Um, the uh, condemnation is a last resort, and um, one property owner um, was a little bit tentative. But after we've explained the process, um, they do do not seem like they are going to. Um, have much problem with this. That's just my my read. I don't, you know, I don't know for sure, but that's also been um, communicated to me by our real estate services. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry for out of order there. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Councilor Member, Member File. What was your question? Thank you. Uh, you know, I was wondering, since the other questions have been answered relating to the, the property owners and whatnot, I, I do have a question about dust mitigation during project development uh, at, with an amount of property and um, high density of uh, housing around there. I think that's a concern to surrounding residents. I hope that will be part of um, this project. And um, before I move on to other questions, I, I hope to have an answer on that. Yes, most projects do have um, when they're cutting into concrete or asphalt, um, some sort of mitigation for the, okay. the um, dust that comes from that. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's generally part of um, environmental precautions for permitting. Okay, thank you. And this is really important. Fish culverts are very important to uh, our part of the regional um, strategic climate action plan uh, here in Kenmore. So I wanna make sure that these fish culverts that are to be installed are sizable enough that they are passable for juvenile fish without baffles. Thank you, Council Member File. Um, the the culvert will be increased. Uh, it has to accommodate, um, I believe, a hundred year storm um, is the last that I was looking at. So it's basically going to be practically doubled. And the retrofitting connections are those going to be um, increasing the size, connecting to maybe older uh, culvert runs or. Um, would you like me to go back to sharing the screen? It, it, the culvert that we're replacing is just the one at 190th Street. Um, other culverts um, aren't in the scope for this project. So it's just the one and it, it will be large enough and there will be walls that they have to put in to maintain the soils. Um, did that answer your question? It does, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, since this is going to impact street and flow, I'm assuming that there's going to be a sidewalk um, update with ADA um, access. Yes, um, at the, the both the north and south corner of that, we will be they will have to be put in new sidewalks. Um, we're only going to that to the portion within the scope there, and then there's a bunch of utility um, work that's being done also at the intersection. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, I think on the first, maybe I was, maybe I was misreading the uh, map, but I think on the first uh, slide you showed, it looked like the house on the south, what is that, southeast corner, um, that the part of the property we're taking might have actually gone all the way up to or maybe slightly into the structure is that correct or for for the temporary use thank you uh deputy mayor um yes it it is for maintenance um we've had quite a bit of bank problem in that area uh john am, am i answering that correctly can you chime in for any of that or would you like me to get back on more of that information so if I understand the question correctly, the the uh, the acquisition area is slightly larger than the actual culvert itself. That is to provide maintenance of the culvert, but also uh, you'll see the large the large area that was depicted uh, south of the culvert along 61st. That was for maintenance of the wall that's going to have to be replaced along that sidewalk. But also we took a little bit extra so we can begin maintenance of the stream itself versus leaving that up to the private property owner to maintain because that actually is on their property. And so we wanted to take that responsibility away from them so that they didn't have to worry about regulations and permitting. We could be the experts for them and take care of it at our cost. So that's why there's so much more space for permanent. Thank okay. you, John. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing no further questions, Chair will entertain a motion. 
Mr. Oh, Mayor? Yes. If I may, and I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but prior to asking for the motion, I was hoping that if there is a motion that it would include the ordinance as amended by recommendation of the city engineer, Vincente. And if you wouldn't mind, I made some uh, corrections to it itself and I can screen share those for you so that you can actually see the corrections that go into it. It was a bit daunting having to read it. So I will- uh, Might be a good idea. Attempt to share my screen. So can everybody see that? Yep. Yes. So here's page one of the ordinance. What I highlight in yellow are the changes proposed on page one. I'm just adding exhibits B and exhibit C on page two within section two highlighted yellow. I'm just adding exhibits B and exhibit C. And to provide additional clarification for that, this was attachment A, exhibit A, or, and these were exhibit Bs, which have the legal descriptions and the drawings. So that's why we needed to add that information was to include the actual physical drawings and the legal descriptions. Um, Deputy Mayor. John, I think I see something that you missed on where the section two that you are right now. I think after property, you need to change that to are necessary instead of is. Ah, uh, you're right. Um, Price I pay for doing this quickly. <laughs> That's fair. I just wanted to flag that before we made any motions. Yeah, let me. Uh... Oop. Here we go. Just so that it's visible. There we go. Sorry about that. And can we go back to the up to the first one really quickly too? Okay. Do you have questions? If there are none. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt ordinance number 21-052 to authorizing the acquisition by condemnation of property uh, interest as needed for the uh, 190th Street culvert replacement project as modified by the city engineer. So moved. Seconded, council member Lyle. Moved and seconded. Any further comments? Uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I just wanted to um, a, thank staff for the presentation, but also for the public's sake. I know that when these uh, ordinances come before us, they sound um, they sound awfully scary. And in my time on the council, when the first one came before me, it was a little um, a little scary to undertake. But um, in my time here, I think we've had probably, I don't know, five or six of these ordinances come before us. And I think maybe we've actually had to condemn one of them if that in my entire time here, um, maybe I'm wrong on that, but city staff has been very good at working with property owners and getting consent. Um, yeah, I can't actually think of a time where we've had to, to use condemnation. Um, so this is just something that we, just for the public's sake, something that we do so that they have the tools they need to move forward, but it's not a tool that is used lightly or frankly often at all, so. Yeah, you're right. I can only think of one time and it was well before you joined the council. Uh, council Member Marshall. Yeah, these purposes clearly fall within a public purpose for the environment, for fish passage and improvement of that, and also for road purposes, if there's an undermining of the very uh, road that's going on. So it's well within the public interest. There's no question in my mind. All right, any other uh, comments? Hearing none, the motion before us is to adopt ordinance number 21-0522, authorize the acquisition of, by condemnation of property interest as needed for the uh, Northeast 190th Street culvert replacement project as modified by the city engineer. Um, clerk, please take the roll. Council member Kugler? Yes. Council member File? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herbig? Yes. Councilmember Marshall? Yes. Councilmember O'Kane? Yes. Councilmember Shrubnik? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. The vote is unanimous. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. 
my understanding, well, uh, item B will not be discussed uh, at this meeting. It'll be discussed in, uh, in uh, June. Um, my understanding is there is no staff report tonight. So um, council member reports and comments. Um, council member O'Kane. I don't have any reports or comments this evening. Thank you. Uh, council member Marshall. Uh, I just wanted to comment on our increasing vaccination rates and the hopefulness that brings. And uh, just to, to put it out there that we may be, uh, it may be time to start thinking about the end of emergency powers. Um, I definitely want the recommendations and thoughts of our city manager for sure. And, you know, not deciding anything tonight, we have a lot more data to look at and time to go by, I'm sure. But it, we may be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you. Um, Council Member Kugler. I just want to thank staff for all the incredible work that they've been doing, um, especially in a year where we're dealing with the pandemic and the um unusual nature of the situation. So thank you to all of them. And that's it. Uh, Councilmember Shrebnik. Well, I just want to thank folks who continue to provide us input, both at uh, public comment at meetings, but then also, uh, you know, coffee with council, which of course is a more informal uh, dialogue, but it's um, it's very helpful to to hear from our the residents about their issues. That's it. Uh, Councilmember File. Thank you, Mayor Baker. You know, I, I just want to thank everyone for another productive and, and great meeting. Uh, easy and, and thoughtful input from our community. These are important things that we do together. Um, for our community, this is just a reminder on the 19th at Kimmore Community Club there from 1 to 4 p.m. is uh, the COVID vaccination clinic, whether it's your first shot or your second, anyone and everyone is welcome, ages 12 and up. And uh, I hope that uh, we can be safe and be healthy together. So thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Mayor. You're muted. Sorry, I wanted to flag for y'all that there is a uh, Zoom call tomorrow if you have questions about, or if you wanna get an update uh, from King County Public Health on where we are with COVID. Uh, it's at 10 o'clock, it's from Sound Cities. You probably have it in your email somewhere. Um, they're good calls, um, worth joining in if you have the time. You can just put it on the side and listen in while you're doing other things if you need to also. But um, I am interested to hear what what um, public health has to say about the news that came out last week um, about going to phase four on uh, July 1st. So should be an interesting call worth joining if you are available tomorrow at 10. Um, yeah, the, uh, the vaccination site at uh, the community center, I'd be very careful if it's your second shot, because usually you go back to the same site where you got your first one. And if it is your second one and you want to go there, you better make sure that they've got the vaccine that you need for your second shot because um, they can't always store the Pfizer vaccine properly. And so that's very uh, something you got to be very, very careful of. But I encourage those people who have not gotten vaccinations to do it. Um, we're reaching really good numbers. And even though uh, they are starting to recommend now that you don't need masks if you've been vaccinated. I guess uh, I'm a boomer and uh, I'm going to wear the mask until I know for sure that it's safe. Um, so um, thank you all for everything tonight. And uh, we certainly appreciate hearing from everybody during our comments. And if there's no further new business to come before us, we stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, thank you. Oh, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thanks. Coffee with council. We had a big mistake. It was caused by me. And um, 
I transferred uh, the meeting controls over to Council Member Shrebnik, who had to leave, and she didn't realize that when she left, left, she killed the meeting. We started it up again, but I don't know if we got it all. And one last thing is that after checking with the city attorney, these are not regular scheduled meetings. They do not need to be recorded. So uh, anyway, if when we get back to meeting in person uh, at the uh, at the hangar, it would be impossible to record them anyway. So uh, anyway, thank you all very much. Have a great rest of the week, everybody, and maybe see you tomorrow at the King County Health meeting. Bye. Bye. Good night.